Righto, let's kick it off. G'day from wherever you are in the world. My name's Aaron or Az. Thanks for coming to get back to basics. I'm out here by myself in one of the most remote Ooh. wilderness areas in the whole of Australia for the next series of, of weeks, potentially months. Living solely out of this with minimal rations, just a, a bit of oil, rice, flour, <laughs> a few condiments. And every day I need to hunt, gather, forage, and largely live off the land. So today, I need to catch some tucker. I've pulled up here on the edge of this reef, really crystal clean. I'm hoping that the crocodiles that almost certainly live on this island and this more sandy island here aren't directly behind the boat this morning and they're off chasing turtles, dugongs, mud crabs and stingrays somewhere else. But I'm going to jump in, try and get some breakfast. I'm nervous for this. This is day one. I'm going to film the highs, equally as important the lows, absolutely everything in between for you guys. Anyway, I'm gonna get a mask on. Let's get in the water and try and get some breakfast. I was pretty apprehensive about jumping in the water, but it's super clean, really, really shallow, and I'm bloody hungry. That's breakfast. That's breakfast. Yeah. Oh. There's Brecky, black spot tusk fish. These grow over 10 kilos, they get huge, but that is a perfect eating size for me because obviously I can't store any seafood, no ice, no fridge or anything like that. So let's go head over to the island and cook this tasty one up. Oh, I'm stoked at that. This driftwood and bamboo is not the ideal timber, but hopefully it can generate enough heat to cook this fish up, because I'm hungry. I literally jumped in the water for five minutes before, fortunately, because I I didn't want to be in there for that long, but the coral life and the fish life was pretty spectacular. There was a lot of different fish that I could have shot, but this was probably the, the pick. I absolutely love tuskies, really white flesh and not too big as well. Should cook through really nicely on the fire. Not the ideal coal base. I'm going to go tusky, chili oil, salt and pepper. That is the extent of breakfast. So I did a grand total of zero prep with this fish. It's just literally straight on the coals. A lot of people will gut and gill, but I've just found there's absolutely no reason just whack it on the fire. And the bigger the scales, the better. These tuskies have got pretty big scales. So same as like your, your barramundi and anything with a thick skin as well is really good for a fire. Oh, oh, 
It's so good. Pretty special moment after eating only a bit of the rice rations yesterday and not catching anything. Got a whole tusky to myself. Couple of bush chopsticks. Look at that feed. Golden brown. Oh. That is sensational without anything on it. 9.15 in the morning. So far, so good. That's where the good stuff is. Oh, look at that cheek. Oh, that's the best meat going. That is by far the best meal I've had all day. Let's check out this island. The whole point on this trip was not only living on the land, but just having minimal rations, you know? I wanted to take minimal amount of gear, as you can see, for cooking up breakfast. But anyway, let's go and check out this island. Oh, and if you're not familiar with this, this is a hand spear, traditional hunting hand spear, and this is a woomera, which is to propel this hand spear to hunt your prey. Uh, this was used by indigenous Australians for thousands of years. Hopefully I can get a lot better at it, because at the moment it's a pretty humbling exercise. Oh. There's honestly a fridge on this remote island. I just don't understand. I don't understand how you can lose a fridge. Like, how do you lose your fridge? They're just so hard to lose. It's not like a, like a pet, like a dog or a cat or even your car keys. Like, how do you lose a fridge? What's that? Oh, that's a croc. That's a croc slide, not a big one. It was a dead bird there. It looks like, it always looks like this croc has come up and then gone in to get a bird into the shade there. There was this big school of mullet. I'm well, not big, maybe four or five. But they've eluded me. Look who's coming in on the commotion. Little shark. So that's what I found that I might be able to recycle. It's decent, good rope and styrofoam. Yeah, there's an unfortunate beast that's just about everywhere through the world's oceans, but see if I can find a use for it. Had a quick walk around the edge of the beach and there's so many of these different birds nesting up and having eggs. So many eggs. Like you could see in the distance in the middle of the island, thousands of eggs. And there were some a little bit closer to the shoreline, which I could get a better look at and zoom in with the camera. But there's honestly thousands and thousands of birds, lots of different varieties. Can't imagine what the underwater world is like here as well. Well, I gotta keep moving. I keep getting distracted and we have gotta get a fish. All right, while these winds are so light, I think it'd be rude of me not to head out to the outer reef because I'd say it's going to stay like this for a couple of days. And when it blows up, I'll come back into these inshore islands that have really good protection. But let's head out to the outer reef now. It's only about 20 miles from here and hopefully can find a fish to eat and decent anchorage for tonight. How good is this? Woo! Oh, I am 100% coming back here. Let's fish. Just gone over a heap of fish in 20 meters. I'm gonna drop a jig down, see if anything wants to take the bait. I just got smoked first drop. I took my hook off, I reset. Second drop and I'm back on. It's only 16 meters of water. The sound is, oh no. The sound was lit up like a Christmas tree. What happened there? It snapped the hook, it snapped the tip of the hook off. I've had a real life shocker here. Lost a jig, lost two what felt like really good fish. That's all part of it. No more mucking around, I'm going a big jig. Oh! Best looking fish in the ocean. Coral cod, that one. Wow. See you, mate. Doesn't feel that big, but it's a fish. What do we got? Oh! Yes! Oh! How's that for a coral trout? Oh, no way. Assistance paid off, look at that. Probably a 43 centimeter trout. 
much bigger than that and it'd be too much for me, but that's perfect for dinner. I'll eat all of that. Didn't put much of a fight. I had that drag cranked up so tough you wouldn't have been able to pull it with a truck, but I'll bleed this one. We'll cook it up later. All right, these are our new back to basics jigs. The reason we made these, not only do a few of them glow in the dark and they look great, but have we got those hooks? These hooks are gonna hold. Just found this island on the way out to the reef and it's pretty gorgeous. There's a lot of birds, I'd say some of them might be nesting, so I'll do my best to stay out of their way if that's the case. This here's turtle tracks where they've come up the beach, up here and nested here and there. Probably only last night, that's where it come up, nested, then went back down into the water. <laughs> and I can actually see turtles out there. Oh, bindies. Oh, bindies everywhere. These really, really sharp seeds. Oh, hundreds of them. Ah, back on the sand. I'm not one to complain at all, but I just want to give you the reality of the situation. This sand at 1 p.m. in the middle of summer in Cape York is burning the soles of my feet. Oh. It is so hot. <laughs> yeah, the turns. just heard stories over the last few years from mates who are commercial fishermen up this way about this K on the Outer Barrier Reef and I wasn't sure if it existed but look at this I'm honestly speechless though this is perfection about 300 meters that way goes down to 60 meters deep and then you come around this corner on the other side of those rocks in the distance and it goes down to kilometers deep, thousands of meters deep. We're literally on the outer barrier reef and then it goes down into these big ocean trenches and then out to the coral sea. To have something like this right on the edge of it where you can pull up and camp on, is extremely rare. Especially one that you can fish around too because there's lots of marine sanctuaries and national parks that are green zones, so they're protected. You can't, they're no take areas for good reason, mind you, but this one's free game. So I'm gonna have a little bit of lunch, have a bit of this trout, and then go out, put the poppers on and have a top water fish. I reckon that's the play. Also, a lot of people have asked me what knives we use. These are a Back to Basics and Jack and the Bear blade. They come in a set of three filleting knives. You can find them on our website as well as a lot of other different uh, outdoor adventure gear and, and links to what Back to Basics is working on if you're new to the channel. But if you want a knife that's gonna last you forever, they're on our website. easy as that simple seafood rice the trick with this was i washed it out twice in salt water and then add it fresh and then i put pepper in and olive oil but if you had butter that'd be uh, raunchy too and then fish salt pepper oil on cast iron pan not bad for a chumby eh we've come this far i'll share the verdict with you it's really 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 tasty, happy with that. I was just about to jump in the water 
after having lunch to have a swim and a snorkel and have a look at this this little tiger shark has just come into the shallows and it's hunting up against the edge of the cave look it's curious of the boat look at this oh that is epic straight under the boat oh no it's not a tiger shark the shark's just literally hanging around the back of the boat all right let's move Look, considering it's about a thousand degrees Celsius, right, it's not that hot, but it's pretty hot. I thought it'd be rude not to jump in the water and have a look as it is so crystal clean and there's a lot of coral life. So I'm just gonna take the gun. I don't need to shoot anything, but after seeing that shark, you know, there's probably sharks about five times the size of that out here. So for protection, take your gun, get the fins on. Let's check out the underwater life. Watch me fin. That was so quick. Hope you saw that big mirror ass. There's the back of the boat, there's the reef, and there's the big trout. Just everything you can imagine. There were buffalo emperor, which is super elusive. All different types of triggerfish, Maori wrasse, uh, three different species of coral trout, the blue spot common, and passion fruit trout. It's just everything, everything good. <laughs> This is the very, very outer of the barrier reef. It is 200 meters deep just there, exactly where I'm pointing. Imagine just standing and looking up at a skyscraper or a mountain, 200 meters, and that's what it's like, just in that space there. So let's get this lure in the water, see how we go. Easy. All right, not quite what we're after. Fun nonetheless. I'm gonna have to wind up and call it. It's about 5.30, another hour and a half, hour 15 of light. So I've got to cruise back to that sand cave and get a really good anchorage for the night. Now I know why I wasn't catching anything. I've got that skirt, just had the hook taken off, snipped. Maybe a wahoo or, or mackerel or another cooter, but I'll re-rig that up tonight. All right, let's do it. Pretty special to be able to, to be able to call this home sweet home for the night. So 
So I made it back to the K, got a good anchorage, front and stern line, and I had all these grand plans of doing up a bit of a fire or getting the gas cooker out or something and cooking up on the beach. But I'll do that later. I just, I got here, the sun started setting and I just got like proper captivated by nature and just didn't really feel like filming too much or moving too much around. So I'm just gonna take the pace off here, watch this sunset. I appreciate you coming along for the journey if you've made it this far in the video. Uh, this is episode one. I'm gonna put episodes out every week.